Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. The video camera is running. Oh my god! Anyone emergency? Give me an ambulance out here! What you're about to see in the next 60 minutes is real. Real cops. Real crooks. Real cases. Everything from state-of-the-art training to terrifying shootouts. The most reckless criminals, the most bizarre and unusual crimes ever captured on tape. From high-speed chases to robbery in progress. From impossible rescues to insane crimes of passion. We've gathered this amazing video from departments all over the world. Much of it has never been seen outside the law enforcement community. What you see may shock you, frighten you, anger you. But we bring it to you for one reason. Because knowledge is power. A power that could save your life. In my 27 years in law enforcement, I've seen the tragedy of crime compounded by ignorance. Because if people don't know the dangers of crime, then they can't protect themselves. In the next hour, we're going to show you close up the world of crime and criminals. So get ready to get ready. Smithfield, North Carolina. In the history of terrifying pursuits, there has never been a chase like this. It's extraordinary for one reason. The suspect driving this car is only 12 years old. The boy stole the car only minutes ago, and though he can barely see over the steering wheel, he sure can reach the gas pedal. Right now, it's floored. It was more or less he was running from the police. He wasn't going to stop. You know, I, I tried to stay on as best I could. He maneuvers his stolen sedan like a maniac, barreling through intersections, racing through school zones, and flying over railroad tracks at over 90 miles an hour. One minor mistake, one slight overcorrection, and this boy won't live to be a teenager. The police are torn. How do you chase a 12-year-old child? All they can do is try to stop him before he hurts himself or somebody else. But how? The faster they chase him, the wilder he gets. He's running another one. Right now, officers have no choice but to keep a safe distance and hope their flashing lights and siren will be enough to warn oncoming vehicles. But at these speeds, that's almost impossible. Here the boy jets past a pickup truck and cuts over just in time to avoid an oncoming big rig. The combined speeds of these vehicles would have been like hitting a brick wall at over 150 miles an hour. Somebody running from the police like that uh, is not really thinking about uh, human life as a normal person probably would or should. It's a nightmare, trying to chase someone who has no skill and no fear. He barrels up behind a wide load on a blind curve. More oncoming traffic, but that doesn't matter to this boy. Incredibly, he swerves wide and rushes ahead. The lane is clear. Once again, he dodges a bullet. By now, the boy is feeling invincible, but officers know what happens to clueless kids when they get cocky. For no reason, the boy suddenly darts into opposing lane. He missed the white car by inches. I realized that if he'd hit that car, then most certainly somebody would have been hurt or killed. This insanity must end. The officers realize that saving the boy from himself is now more important than catching him. They turn off their lights and sirens and follow at a safe distance. They hope the boy will notice and slow down, but he doesn't. Thinking he's home free, the boy pushes even harder. To make matters worse, he's headed back into town. He's got to be doing at least 120 now. 
Then, the inevitable. A half a mile down the road, the boy loses control. Cruisers and unmarked units rush to the scene. They find the car in a ditch. Amazingly, the boy has escaped serious injury. But he has no idea how serious his situation is. I remember the first sergeant walking over to the vehicle, and he leaned in there to talk to the child. He said, son, you know you're in, in bad trouble. And uh, he looked back at the trooper at the first sergeant and said, no, sir, I'm not either. I have my seatbelt on. Every day, cops are forced to ask themselves the question, is it safer to chase or not to chase? There are no easy answers, but then there are no easy pursuits. Today, Grand Theft Auto became child's play for a reckless 12-year-old. And although he'll spend the next several years in a state juvenile facility, this boy should be grateful. Living through moments like these probably makes him the luckiest kid alive. In law enforcement, the helicopter is the ultimate pursuit vehicle because no matter how fast a suspect drives, he can never outrun one of these. Tampa, Florida. A white sedan tears through traffic pursued by police. These ground units are about 100 yards behind, but they are keeping pace. The driver is wanted for violating his probation, but when police tried to take him to jail, he punched an officer and raced away. He's using the median like a passing lane. All right, OK, oh, it's a red light. He's not stopping. This guy is taking wild chances, breaking every rule of the road. He's not even on the road now. Just passing the traffic on the dirt shoulder. Blowing by cars left and right, barreling down the wrong side of the street. Get over, get over! And racing into the face of oncoming traffic. Oh, look out! That is a near miss. There's an, oh, man! Oh, what is with this guy? The way this suspect is risking innocent lives, the police have to wonder, is he hiding something? Is he guilty of a crime the police don't know about? Why is he running so hard? He's blowing the signal. He's going left. No, no, right. Oh, my god. He clips the truck's fender. But when he keeps on driving, the suspect adds hit and run to his rap sheet. This man is completely blind to danger. It looks like he didn't even see them coming. And deaf to simple common sense. Oh, no, not the school bus. He just cut off that school bus. Police back off when the man races into a residential area. There's a dip. Oh! The car can't take much more of this kind of punishment. With the cop cars out of sight, the suspect figures he's alone. But he's forgotten about the eye in the sky. He's still heading northbound, and there's another intersection. OK, OK, he almost T-boned. Wait a minute. OK, he's stopping. He is stopping. As the suspect tries to sneak into a repair shop, the choppers keep the ground units informed. Corner of Florida, Nebraska. Officers are there in seconds. There are several units on scene right now, and they're going right after us. Within moments, the cops pull the man out of his hiding place. Man, that was so crazy. We was working in the car, and like that, boom, 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 you know. I have a little puppy at home, and I just wanted to get home and, you know, take care of it. A puppy? The cops aren't buying this sob story, and neither will a judge. This reckless, he just cut off that school bus, lawless, senseless fugitive endangered countless innocent lives. And what was his excuse? A little puppy at home. But when his rampage finally ended, he found himself in the doghouse. Coming up. On world's wildest police video. The running never stops. Oh, that was too close. Drunk drivers run on the highways. Teenagers run loose in the streets. And robbers run off with the loot. It's all here. All wild. All real. Next. When crime comes knocking. When the rubber leaves the road, in paramedic unit. when push oh, he spun out. comes to shove, a cop Get out of the car. might be your only hope. Serious trauma. Teenagers face a lot of tough decisions, including the friends they choose. As any parent can tell you, it pays to choose your friends wisely. <laughs> Avon, Ohio. The teenage passenger in this van thought he was just going to catch a movie with a buddy. 
Suspect failure to yield at this time. Suspect failure to yield. But when police tried to stop his friend for speeding, his friend gunned him. Now he's trapped in a senseless high-speed chase. Okay, dispatch, be copy. I copy it in person. The van reaches speeds of over 100 miles per hour. The passenger can only hold on. The driver ignores police warnings. He's gambling with his life and the life of his friend. He starts to lose it, repeatedly crossing the center line. He veers into oncoming traffic, then barrels through a red light. Guys all over the place. He tries to round a turn at high speed. And smashes into a pole. The teenage driver makes a run for it. Police find the frightened passenger still glued to his seat. Moments later, his friend is caught. But both teens are arrested. It's a hard lesson learned. Unfortunately, stories like this one frequently end in disaster. Here we are in Rogersville, Tennessee. A patrol car passes a carload of teenagers. The driver tries to turn around but almost loses control. Then he floors it. Backup vehicles coming the other way try to block his path. Watch it, watch it. The driver veers into the other lane, forcing a car off the road. But there's a sharp turn ahead, and these kids are going way too fast. The car tips over, its taillights turning one on top of the other. Okay, send paramedic unit, Abe. And what's about to happen next is incredible. The driver scrambles free and runs away. Hey, come on around me. Go up the road and get that run on me. Another officer gives chase. But the reality of this tragic accident is just now becoming apparent. Police find the other teens trapped beneath the crushing weight of the car. While officers try to help the three teenage victims, Maddox alerts paramedics. The one that is pinned is it a serious trauma? That is correct, Jim. You are going to look at serious trauma. Tenfold. The paramedics arrive moments later. All three teenagers suffer critical injuries. Watch it. These drivers will have to live with the consequences of their actions for the rest of their lives. Unfortunately, so will their friends. Florence, Alabama. Two drunken teenagers are out for a late night joyride. The driver has borrowed his father's pickup. He and his buddy have a six pack. They have the town to themselves. And now they have trouble. Blowing to South Ohio, 1031 southbound. Copy 1031. The kids make a run for it, skidding into a parking lot. Veering insanely, they just miss a shack. Now there's nowhere to run, so the boys charge back toward the road. The cops turn around to cut him off, but the driver makes a wild exit. He's treating his dad's pickup like a stunt car. The kids get rocked by the landing and keep their frantic pace. Seconds later, the officers follow them down a side road. Ignoring a stop sign, the teens try another high-speed turn. But this time, their daredevil flight gets grounded by a bush. Get out of the truck now! These drunken joyriders thought they could spend the night raising a little hell and running from the law. Now this driver is not only facing charges of DUI and reckless endangerment, but he must explain to his father why he trashed the family pickup. Los Angeles, California. Two robbers hold up a liquor store. One of them carries a gun. Two shots are fired. The clerk and one robber are hit. The crime takes only 17 seconds. The robbers may think they've pulled it off, but justice finds each of them in a most unusual way. It starts when the first thief pulls out his weapon and points it at the surprised clerk. The terrified customers escape into the street and the second thief leaps over the counter. But the threatened clerk has a gun of his own and fires directly at the second thief. The first 
first thief fires blind as the second thief scrambles back over the counter. As they head for the door, the second thief lifts his shirt, amazed to discover he's been hit in the stomach. He dies moments after leaving the store. Within hours, police arrest the surviving thief. They don't charge him with robbery. They don't charge him with assault. He's charged with murder, the murder of his friend. In this case, although he didn't actually shoot his accomplice, he's the perpetrator of the crime. He's responsible for everything that happens during the crime. He instigated the robbery. Somebody died as a result. He gets charged with murder. Each of these crooks paid a heavy price for this crime. One paid with his freedom. The other paid with his life. Next on World's Wildest Police Video. What goes up must go down. A Utah man burns up the road. A Washington gang scoops up the loot. An American soldier cracks up a car. Even when they go down, they get back up for more. Next. Crash. They're running and smashing, sparking all over the place. and dodging. They do the impossible to get away. Sometimes they make it. Sometimes they don't. Salt Lake City. Police units tear through the night in pursuit of a fleeing robbery suspect. Up ahead, an officer deploys razor-sharp spike strips. I'm about to get my spikes. Uh, they're coming up on me now. The spikes tear away the suspect's front left tire. Now he's running on the rim. Joining the high-speed pursuit, the officer catches up in a flash. But when the cop swings into the right lane, it looks like the suspect has the 4th of July under his chassis. Oh, Grinding steel at 80 miles an hour, the suspect leaves a 30-foot-long trail of sparks. When the rim gives out, the friction gets heavier. The police try to close in, but passing isn't an option. Every one of those sparks is actually a white-hot chunk of molten metal being ripped off the front of the suspect's car. The smoke is thick. The heat is on and the danger level is through the roof. I'm not going to get close to it. It'll like keep in after staring. At any moment, a stray spark could ignite the gas tank and blow the car sky high. That would be the end of the suspect and the lead unit. He's on the bumper. He's not going to be able to go much further. After miles of fiery pursuit, his car is finally giving out. Well, they go down to 39. But as long as fire, gasoline, and speed are involved, no one is safe. Now be careful. Look careful. It's far from over as the man jumps from the burning car. From behind, a unit spots the suspect running for the woods beyond the fence. So the trooper in this unit uses his vehicle to end any chance of escape. The suspect can't believe it. And by the time he recovers, the police are on him. This full throttle thief burned his car to the ground and blazed a trail across the highway. Oh, it's all over the place. But when the fireworks ended, the police made sure this fugitive took the fall. There's a new breed of criminal on the streets, and for them, violence is second nature. Washington, D.C. The owner of this jewelry store, along with his wife and daughter-in-law, carry on business as usual. They courteously help three customers in the store. But these customers are here to help themselves. Excuse me, man. Stand up, don't you move. Don't move. One of the men leaps over the counter as his two accomplices take care of the wife and daughter-in-law. The robbers threaten to kill the women if they resist. They don't care that the daughter-in-law is nine months pregnant. The thieves bust open the cases and scoop up diamonds like ice in a bucket. Then they shoot out the glass of the locked front door and make their escape. 
the robbers made off with over $30,000 in jewelry. But thanks to this videotape, they were soon apprehended by the police. These men were convicted of armed robbery and assault. Lumberton, New Jersey. Officer Jim Myers stops his Ford Taurus for speedy. 116, traffic stop. 116. Inside the car is an 18-year-old driver who has just deserted the military. To make matters worse, the car is stolen. He was on his way to sell it when he was stopped. So when Officer Myers steps out of his cruiser to give him a ticket, the kid floors it. Okay, he's running on me. 116 The suspect had made a series of bad choices over the last few weeks. But approaching this intersection at 80 miles an hour may be his last. He's not stopping. Woo! He never sees it coming. Neither does the young woman approaching from the other direction. The suspect gets spun like a top before finally stopping on the side of the road. 160, he's TC at the junction of 206 and 280. Request paramedic unit. Copy, 116, paramedic route. Officer Myers finds the suspect dazed but uninjured. However, he's not taking any chances. He handcuffs the teenager to the steering wheel and rushes off to check on the young woman. Incredibly, she suffered only minor injuries, and she'll be okay. But the suspect's troubles are just beginning. In addition to a court-martial, he's facing charges of auto theft, felony evasion, and aggravated assault. Instead of serving his country in the military, he'll be serving time for going AWOL. from the law. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Video. Keep your hands off of me. The dangerous, the desperate, and the, truck over. the good, Can you walk back this way? the bad, and the deadly. There's somebody with a gun down there. A pursuit through the winter snow. <laughs> a suspect makes a big mistake and a chase that goes too far. Sit paramedic unit. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. She's naked in the diaper. There's one Pull it over. on the run. They got him, they got him. There's two eye to eye. And three over the line. Armed and dangerous. He's got a gun. The crooks keep coming. He has just got to give up. 24-7. In any high-speed chase, a police officer is going to be constantly assessing the pros and the cons of continuing. He wants to know at what point the risk to innocent lives becomes too great. And that can be a tough call. Avon, Ohio. A man has kidnapped his two children from his ex-wife. Now he runs from the police in a pickup truck his terrified children along for the ride. The suspect is not responding. We are in pursuit. The roads are treacherous, but that doesn't stop this father from putting his kids' lives at risk. He takes an icy turn at 50 miles per hour. The guy's not slowing down. He's driving very recklessly at the time. Then he pushes it up to 70. Desperate to shake the police, he suddenly pulls a U-turn. But the cops are ready, swooping in to block his path. The crazed father weaves through the roadblock, missing cars by inches. It's clear the man has no concern for his children's safety. But the cops do. They call off the pursuit. Maybe they can catch the suspect later. But it's a sure thing that if this chase continued right now, somebody was going to get hurt. Lorain County, Ohio. Three burglary suspects try to escape with a truck full of stolen goods. Unable to outrun the cops, the suspects try to outmuscle them. They deliberately try to knock the police car into a road sign. Trying to ram cruisers. But these cops can handle a few hits. They recover just in time to get around a big rig. Now it's the suspects who are on the shoulder. Okay, we're coming up under the Nagel Road overpass. He's going into the medium trying to pass. The 
truck's driving becomes more erratic and more dangerous. This pursuit can't continue. The cops order the driver to stop. In the heat of the moment, the rookie officer on the megaphone gets carried away, but catches himself mid-sentence. In the pickup truck, power over. You are, or just will be. In the pickup truck, pull it over. An 18-wheeler up ahead may provide an opportunity to end this dangerous chase. The suspects are about to get boxed in, and they know it. They suddenly cut hard across lanes, barely making an off-ramp and just missing an exit marker. At 90 miles per hour, the pursuing vehicles can't make this exit. It's time to call it off. A seasoned officer knows that no chase is worth getting someone killed, including yourself. Sometimes a suspect is his own worst enemy. This chase in Willoughby, Ohio is already at 90 miles per hour. When the driver pushes it past 100 to pass on the shoulder, police decide to call off the pursuit. The cops hope the driver will slow down before he kills somebody, but he doesn't. He takes it up to 120 and passes another truck. In a matter of seconds, he triples his distance from the police cruiser. He thinks he's free and clear. The suspect blazes up an exit ramp like a rocket, but this missile is about to go off course. There's a turn at the top, and the driver doesn't see it coming. Unable to stop, he explodes through the metal guardrail and smashes headlong into a towering 80-foot light pole. The pole snaps in two. A thousand pounds of metal comes crashing down to earth, flattening the car. Dispatch, you need an ambulance out here? 10-4, copy request for ambulance, making notification. Sometimes cops don't need to call off a pursuit. The suspect ends it all by himself. In any chase, there are three lives at stake. The officer, the criminal, and the innocent motorist. Because cops don't want anyone to die, they must sometimes call off a pursuit. It may not be the ideal outcome, but considering the alternative, it's the only one possible. Not every arrest goes according to plan. I placed you under arrest. I'm not gonna let you go back to that vehicle. Faced with hard time, a suspect can suddenly turn violent. For cops, it's an occupational hazard even if the suspect is already in custody. Baytown, Texas. A cop books an unruly suspect on a DUI. I have to videotape this interview, all right? Now, what I think about your video is This cop sees a lot of drunks with attitudes, but he's never had one like this before. Mr. Gibbs, get off the desk. It will not hold you. The man is not about to comply. He's drunk, he's angry, and he thinks he's above the law. Keep your hands off of me. Get up and stand against the wall. Don't you keep your hands off of me. I spit on you, you see, I whoop your ass. And I bet you I'll whoop you. This drunk's behavior might impress lowlifes on the street. His hollow threats might make some punks back off. And I bet you I'll whoop you. But his repulsive actions don't phase this officer. This cop's a pro. He has a job to do. Mr. Gibbs, I'm going to read you your legal warning now. You have the right to remain silent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to listen to this. Suddenly, the man makes a move to leave. Come back. He makes a big mistake. The cop reacts. Other cops help get the man under control. Gibbs now faces a stiffer charge, assault on a police officer. He learns a lesson the hard way. He may get away with spitting. You may get away with empty threats. But you can't hit a cop in the Baytown jail. Coming up, 
On world's wildest police video. She's naked as a daybird. Crime runs wild on America's highway. This is getting very dangerous. A woman in Baytown gives officers the slip. Get out of the car! A drunk in Arkansas I'm a shit drunk. comes up with a whopper. CIA. And teenagers in Texas. About 16 years old, 17. Tear up the road. They just crashed. No holds barred. You're under arrest. No punches pulled. No easy way out. They've got him wedged in. He's stuck. Get out of the car! This is just an accident waiting to happen. Oh, there goes the bumper. It takes what it takes to stop a criminal. A couple of cops. How much did you drink? And a pair of cuffs. You're under arrest for driving while intoxicated. An off-duty cop in a pickup truck. A team of cops in a squadron of cruisers. You just gotta give up. Who don't go home until the job is done. They got him. They got him. When a chase begins strangely, the only thing a cop can count on, it's probably going to get a whole lot stranger. In Baytown, Texas, Officer Malcolm Fowler gets a call about a green SUV on the run. But when he pulls up alongside, he observes an interesting detail. The suspect is a woman, but that's not all. She's naked as a neighbor. It's obvious. This is not going to be a normal pursuit. Hey, Dan, I need some help up here this Fowler calls for backup, expecting a cruiser or a cycle unit. But the help he gets comes from an off-duty cop driving his own personal vehicle, a pickup. Officer Fowler has no time to reflect on how odd this situation is. Things are getting dangerous. The suspect weaves wildly, trying to get around the pickup truck. The officers box her in, but the suspect isn't ready to quit. She nearly runs over and crushes the off-duty cop while making her escape. The chase is on again. As traffic gets heavier, it becomes a life-threatening series of cat and mouse maneuvers at 80 miles an hour. Take it, take it, take it. The suspect races off the freeway, but when it looks like things are getting tight, she makes her own on-ramp. Fowler and his off-duty partner catch up in a hurry, only to find they have some unexpected help. The civilian in this black truck gives the officers an assist, blocking the suspect in. Now there are two pickups in this chase. It's a brave and reckless move that almost costs the Samaritan his life. I think cars, he's locked off the road. The determined citizen comes right back again. This time, the suspect makes a muddy escape across the median. Pursuing this wild driver is getting more and more hazardous by the second. Thankfully, out of nowhere, a roadblock appears ahead. It's that same helpful citizen from before, blocking the road with his black truck. But the suspect goes right around. The only thing the man ends up blocking is the police. The chase continues, weaving and slaloming across the highway. Officer Fowler can't even imagine the report he'll have to file. He's chasing a reckless, naked woman in a two-ton vehicle. And he's got a misguided Samaritan and an off-duty cop as his wingman. It just doesn't get any stranger than this. The pursuit moves on to narrow two-lane streets. With the off-duty cop in front and Fowler behind, the suspect has absolutely nowhere to go. Officer Fowler has had enough of this bizarre chase. Get out of the car! Get out of the car! Get out of the car! He quickly arrests the woman and puts her in his cruiser. Finally, regular backup arrives. But after everything he's been through, Fowler is faced with one last dilemma. Just when a cop thinks he's seen it all, a chase like this one comes along. One off-duty cop and one gun ho Samaritan ended up with dented trucks for their efforts. The female suspect received an extended trip to the state psychiatric hospital. And as for Officer Malcolm Fowler, he got a reminder of just how bizarre and dangerous this job can be. Sherwood, Arkansas. 
In this daylight DUI, a man has driven his pickup truck over the curb. Now he's stuck. When a cop arrives, it's soon clear that the man is in no condition to sit behind the wheel. Hurry. Have some trouble there? Yeah. For safety, the officer immediately gets the man to move away from the road. Why don't you stand up for me? You got a driver's license on you? Stay back out over this way. You got a driver's license on you? No, I don't. You don't? Oh, okay. You don't have one at all, or you don't have it with you? It's not a trick question, but the suspect is so drunk, everything trips him up. The officer tries to go easy on him. How much did you drink? I just had lunch and let's get this squared away, man. Okay. The officer remains courteous and efficient. Then the suspect reveals an important piece of information. I'm working on the same side of the street you are, man. He's claiming to be a government agent. Okay. CIA. You CIA, you got any ID on you? Hell no. The cop informs his partner that the man works for the Central Intelligence Agency. Todd, he works for the CIA. Do you really? Where's Branch? Again, the man is stumped. The suspect has answers. The cops just keep asking the wrong questions. Do you know uh, your ABCs? I know where I was born. I'm a citizen. OK, but do you know your ABCs? C, X, Y, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Can you say them through for me? M, N, O, D, E. Can you start at the beginning? So much for the oral exam. Now they test his motor skills. Come on. Walk, 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 walk toward me. Come here. The man won't budge. But like any good spy, he does have an eye for details. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Can you do that? Oh, golly, they aren't. I tell you what, can you just stand with your feet together? Can you, why don't you try that for me? Can you do this? What was that? Yes. The cop has been patient, but enough is enough. And that's all you do? Yes. Okay, yeah. that's good enough. Turn around and put your hands on the truck for me. Come on, man. The suspect pleads to be let go. He thinks he's fit for duty. But anyone this blitzed is a definite danger on the road. You're under arrest for driving while intoxicated, okay? Like it or not, this spy is coming in from the cold and spending the night in jail. Maybe the next time he drinks, this James Bond wannabe will have enough intelligence to stay off the road. Converse, Texas. Police chase two fleeing teenagers, suspected house burglars. Fresh from a job, their car is filled with loot. I've got two subjects in the vehicle, about 16 years old, 17. Both may have weapons. Juvenile delinquents armed and on the run, an extremely dangerous combination. The driver veers across this road. Going on the wrong side of the road. Moments later, he almost slams into a truck. For now, police stay back, waiting for the right moment to make their move. Just exit 177. The driver makes a sharp left turn, then another, but the police never miss a beat. Across the bridge. They've got to stop these kids before they kill themselves. Up ahead, cops have a surprise for them. Two cruisers form a roadblock, but the teens have a surprise of their own. Coming up on 15, 18 exit. The cops know the felons will try to make this exit. Because it connects directly to a suburban neighborhood, they fear the teens could then flee on foot. He's gonna run. And easily lose the cops in the maze of houses. They make the turn. But the driver suddenly loses control and slams into a concrete barrier. The car rolls down a hill and screeches to a stop. Put your hands in the air. Their burglary career is over. For now, these two juvenile delinquents may be spending some real time behind bars. So the next time they think about robbing someone's house, they may just change their minds. 
Coming up on World's Wildest Police Video, cops team up to catch a thief. He's running. But honest citizens... Oh, there's a woman in the middle of the road now. ...get in the way. Next. Helpful citizens can be a cop's best friend. But when a misguided Samaritan becomes involved in a high-speed chase, the results can be tragic. He's right under us. There he is. San Bernardino County, California. The driver of this car is wanted for threatening other commuters with a gun. Traffic is moving, but he's passing cars left and right. As the roads get more congested, the suspect begins weaving in and out of lanes. It looks like he's going to act. No, no, he's staying westbound. More dangerous weaving. Still, officers hang back. It's too crowded to make a move. He won't stay in one lane for more than a few seconds. The police can only hope none of these near misses turns into a deadly collision. Oh, that was too close. The chase moves off the freeway, but the threat of a crash is far from over. OK, now he's on Serpent Street. Now officers have a whole new set of problems to deal with. This hour-long chase is being televised on live TV. As a result, well-meaning civilians try to lend a helping hand. Oh, there's a woman in the middle of the road down there. What is she thinking? She just hit the car with her hand. But she isn't the only aggressive Samaritan. He's turning left. Hold on. Look at that red car. What? What's he trying to do? The red subcompact is shadowing the suspect. This is the kind of blind bravery that gets people hurt. He's going through anyway. Whoa, watch it. This is just an accident waiting to happen. But the most dangerous attempt at helping comes from a truck driver. The driver is going around that flat bend. I'll tell you, this is getting very dangerous. Given a choice, the police would let this chase run its course. But this guy is getting annoyed. He's yelling at somebody. What if the irate suspect decides to run over the next person who tries to interfere? That's a risk the officers can't take. They act decisively. Oh, oh, he spun out. Oh, no, he's on the sidewalk. The attempted maneuver fails. And now the suspect is running scared and driving on edge. That was almost head on. With the driver now acting reckless, officers have to end the chase immediately. They hit him again. He spun all the way. Another one. He has just got to give up. But the crunch of metal only convinces this guy to run harder. The cops are right on him, forcing the suspect off the main road. Working together, two units double-team the Road Rager. They've got him wedged in. He's stuck. Oh, there goes the bumper. After bouncing off a parked car, the suspect tries to keep going. That car's just going to fall apart. A final ramming leaves the car disabled on the median strip. Looks like it's all over. He's getting out. He's running. The desperate man makes a break for it. He runs hard, but he's got more Samaritans and several uniformed officers on his heels. He's going for the backyard of that private house. The suspect is caught from behind and goes down in a painful heap. They got him. They got him. But once again, a well-meaning citizen complicates things. There's somebody with a gun down there. A resident of the house is armed and ready to protect his property. Police disarm him, sending the man back inside before somebody gets hurt. The suspect is led away in cuffs, surrounded by reporters looking for a scoop. He has yet to be tried or convicted. But what can he say? He was armed and running from the law. Excuse me, sir. Did you fire your weapon? The arm was on the floor of the car. As the suspect is taken away, the street is full of curious neighbors. It looks like the whole neighborhood's out. It's a reminder of how many lives were saved by ending this chase. High-speed pursuits are dangerous stuff. Even for trained professionals, it takes total concentration. But when civilians try to be heroes, it can actually make a cop's job twice as hard. Police didn't wait for a good Samaritan to end up a dead Samaritan. Instead, they acted fast and brought this chase to a crashing end. Life of crime that, that, that is a juvenile. may seem thrilling, years old. like a carnival ride that always goes faster. But the ride ends too soon, and the price must be paid.